Press Start Podcast. And welcome back to the Press Start Podcast. I'm your host, Vic, a.k.a. Mr. Never Chillin'. This is episode number 134, and I'm joined by my co-host, Scott, a.k.a. Scopey One. What is up, everyone? Welcome back. And on the other side, we do got Roger, a.k.a. Lunatic Oblivion. Welcome back, my friend. Hey, guys. How are you doing today? The three amigos are back after uh, just uh, one short week. I know we took last week off, obviously, for Father's Day, since we are all fathers now. Congrats to us. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. How, how have you guys been? It's been been doing, you know. New <laughs> job starts tomorrow. Is there, a what kid, a, you know, he's yeah. doing his thing <laughs> yeah he's probably like running around the house terrorizing something the cats the kid starts his new job tomorrow yeah <laughs> he's just yeah. Already, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah it's man rough. he's he's like he wants to walk that's 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 his new favorite thing so it's just like trying hey, to walk but not there, there and, well no he walks i just oh, okay. have to hold him up yeah he he has the whole fur, foot in front of the other foot kind of thing going oh, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it, same it with what same he's with doing. Yeah, she started the car around the house, and she'll stand up, and then, like, obviously you have to, like, walk her if she wants to walk, but, like, yeah, she yeah. she's ready to run around if it was up to her getting into shit already. I'm like, oh, I gotta start baby-proofing the house. Yeah, <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's definitely crazy. And then, like, we put her down for a nap in her crib, and um, she woke up, and she's, like, standing on the side of her crib, and I'm like, well, we're gonna have to lower, na- lower this one now because she is getting to be a little bit too tall. <laughs> yeah, he's re- he was reaching over the edge like this and just yep. looking down and he's like he threw a pacifier down and just went <laughs> and I was like, All right, we're good. Let's let's yep. this Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm just making a quick change. Yeah. So what what about you, Scott? I know uh, you got your baby's on the way and almost here, but uh how, how are things in the in the Scott world? Man, crazy. We don't have a minute. Uh we really don't uh between getting everything ready for the baby uh some other things that are happening here uh soon is gonna be an insane july probably the busiest july i've ever had in my life uh and then i just got off of um my annual training so i was working for three weeks uh almost straight so it was it was 12 days straight and then we had the weekend and then right back into it for another week uh so i just got off of that as well which has led for no time for anything else except for sleep uh and a little bit of like crying every once in a while (laughs) um when when time allows but that's the fetal really position helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah fe- fetal's nice. What I've found is that I actually do it in the shower while I'm while I'm showering. It saves a boatload of time. So if anybody here needs to cry at all, I just do it in the mornings, uh, <laughs> or do it at night before bed when you're showering. And man, it's like, yeah, you're good. Yeah, you, time. yeah, you have so much time to do other things. Yeah, <laughs> so much time for activities. <laughs> so much time, but um, yeah, man, let's talk about like what we've been playing. Obviously, Scott, I know you weren't you have too much time to play too much games, but we'll we'll talk about some games here. I got a a pretty long list, so I'm only going to talk about really the games that I've beaten. Really, um, just want to talk about real quick with you, Scott. You just played Exafiant for the first time before the podcast. Well, more or less your first time, but um, how how's your how's your experience going so far? Yeah, it was exactly like I remembered it when I first hopped in, and I got my shit completely rocked for no fucking reason, getting two bullets but dying, and then meanwhile I'm on somebody for my entire clip, and they're just, they're just brushing it off. Yeah, uh, make this you know? game sound so fun. No. It's uh super fun if Not for you're Scott. into if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> just gotta get good. In, yeah, if you're in if you're into getting your pubes stepped on, then by all means, <laughs> play the game. Uh, by the end of it, but once I got the hang of it, it was fine. Once I once I kind of moved out of like any other like game mode that I was in and into this one, it was a little bit fine. Um, uh, I think playing a little bit longer, I'd 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 be okay with it. Yeah, man, it's it's first, an adjustment. Like, those first couple games, that was it was just fucking rough. Roger, remember the first time I hopped into Valorant and how bad I played? It's basically the experience that Scott's having right now with X Defiant. Except I, except I, except I captured the leaderboard for every objective we had. Yeah, he was he, was he was a leader on objective, but like bottom of the scoreboard. Period. <laughs> yeah, I was like three and nineteen <laughs> with like eight hundred damage. I'm like, yeah, that, that tracks. Yeah, at least we went on a three game yeah. win streak. So, so I've been I've been enjoying the game. Actually, I was just telling Scott while we were playing. I was like, I almost have every achievement there that there is for the game. There's like twelve achievements, and I have eleven. I all I gotta do is reach level fifty, and I'll have all all the achievements for the game. But overall, I've been really enjoying X Defiant and looking forward to season one dropping here on uh, July. 5th first or second it's like right around the corner 
So new new faction, new maps, new new guns, new game modes. There's gonna be a lot of content rolling out for the game. So really looking forward to that. But enough of me and Scott talk. Roger, what game would you like to highlight here on your uh, exciting list? Actually, I want to hear about Galactic Care. This is a game that recently came to Game Pass. I assume that's why you picked it up. Yeah, I just saw it sitting there, and I was like, might as well give it a go. See what's see what's going on with it. And honestly, it was nothing nothing special, nothing to write home about. You know, it just felt like uh, Two Point Hospital. You know, all the other games like that. It, it didn't offer anything new to the genre, really. That's the problem lately with these games is everyone's like just doing clones, and then nothing new gets actually added to like the game genre at all. Right. Yeah, that's been a lot of issues with like a lot of games I've been playing. It's like they'll get like an eight or nine out of out of ten for me, but it's like the missing part is doing something new to make it stand out from the rest of them. Like it's an overall great experience. It's a great game for it, the clone that it is, but it just didn't do something but it's different. A clone. Yeah, so it's not like the OG. Like yeah, you're not better than what came before it. I'm sorry. Like this is how it is. But I just want to done talk- better. Been done before. Yeah, shout out to Game Pass, man, because I played, as you can see here, I have four beaten games on my list. I'm actually doing really well. I think I beat 26 games for the year, and the week of 26 week just started, so I'm on par. But, um, Scott, you were trying to ask about Hellblade 2 before the stream, and you're like, you know, just wait to talk about it. This game was a masterpiece. It's literally got a 10 out of 10 from me, and it just did everything perfect. It, like, the story... The I mean we already know the game is really known for like the audio cues, but like visually this was the most next gen looking game I have ever played. And it was just great. But like some of the puzzles, they were very simple, but like they just it worked with what style game it was. Like I wasn't looking for something over the top. I wasn't looking for like some game defining new mechanic from this because that's not was I what I was expecting out of this and it just did everything really well. The audio cues like I was telling people about it and like I would bring it up showing them YouTube videos or I let my wife I was like look put this headset on right now and listen to the voices that are in your head. This is basically what she's dealing with dealing with like psychosis and schizophrenia like they do a really great job of, of capturing that. But yeah, building off of the previous game story to where she's at now trying to get revenge on the people that killed like her family and stuff. That, and but what, by the time you get to the end of the game, you're like, holy fuck! Like this was a great game, but yeah, it, the the length was great. Like everything that you could throw at this game, perfect, no issues at all. So I definitely highly recommend both of you guys checking it out. Game Pass Day One, and if you have not played the first one, I think it's also on Game Pass as well. Another great experience. So definitely, definitely go check that out. No, for sure. But moving on to another game that I played via Game Pass was called Maquette. This is a uh, like a puzzle game, and this one's really interesting because it almost feels like Inception because like you're looking at like a a three D replica of like a map. It's laid out in front of you. It's like a decaled map, and then but like you can manipulate and drop things into it. But like you are actually in the real world as well. So like if you drop like a a block right in front of you, it's going to appear right in front of you as well but it's gonna be much bigger obviously and it's like in this like you can either go really big or go really small like it's it's like an infinite like layout of the world and it's a really cool concept and um once i got the hang of it it was a lot of fun and it was really like telling like a really unique story of like a um husband and wife like first meeting each other and then going through the bad times and then getting married and then it gets worse and then they eventually get divorced and but like dealing with closure at the end of like of a, of a breakup you know i mean I, i'm sure you guys have been through those as well but like that that feeling of closure when you get to the end of it it gave you that same kind of feeling too when you got to the end of the game as well but it was a unique way of telling that kind of story through the puzzle kind of game play mechanics that you were really doing um but yeah overall great experience um it's game pass so it, it was easy hop in hop out kind of kind of thing it was a pretty quick experience too i think i beat it in like three hours right around three hours so one sitting was able to get that done. Nice. Enough of me talking for now. I do got two more games that I wanted to talk about. But uh, Scott, um, Baldur's Three is is back again on your list. Did you try to do some more honor mode, or were you just testing some stuff? Yeah, out? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just slow rolling it uh, with my uh, my new uh, Storm Sorcerer, Stormy Daniel, um, and we're just kind of hanging out. Just, I'm, I'm taking it super slow because at this point, like, I'm just burnt out from. Uh, like from from playing the game all the way up until like mid act three so it's just kind of like going through the motions like the last like four times that i was trying to do an honor mode 
I'm doing uh, I'm doing the same things that I've always done and like I've done everything in each individual area for each individual act so it's just kind of like oh, I gotta go do this and I gotta go do that so I'm just slow rolling it and just kind of like when I have some time and I don't want to really do anything else or get too deep, too into the weeds or I don't want to sweat or throw my mouse <laughs> then I'll play that um, just to kind of slow roll it it really won't get to the forefront of my mind until I get back up to where I was when I got my when I got completely wiped mm-hmm. uh, and that was the Orin fight uh, with her boon from Ball so we'll see how that goes because um, that was just a meat grinder yeah, uh, and that's that's a part that stopped a lot of games, uh, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of games for people, and they're just like, I can't go back anymore because you've just you've done everything so many times, and you can only do everything so many times before you're just like, you go insane. I have, I've got nothing left to give. I've got yeah. nothing left to give this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just real quick, the chat, uh, Marshmallow. I, I agree. Like the only that is to me is not an issue, but um, it definitely feel like a movie in a lot of points. But the thing is, like the game did it so well, like you could not tell what was a cutscene. And then what was actually gameplay? There was a lot of points where I was like, "Oh, I'm actually controlling the character now." Like I literally just didn't know, and I'm just like, "Holy shit!" Like I thought I was just in a in a cutscene, like part of a, like a movie or something. But yeah, it it blended it extremely well. It's not no cut the black like uh, Dying Light two days. <laughs> but um, Roger, what what's another game you want to talk about? Actually, Humanity. I actually downloaded this game because I wanted to give it a go. I have not tried it yet. Is this a game to check out? Is this worth worth actually playing? Yeah, it's it's definitely a newer style of like it I can't think of another game that's truly done the same thing that this has. Okay. So I'm I'm actually quite excited to play it. Like it felt good playing the game. The story is interesting so far. Like you play as a dog who's leading people, you know, to a better future, a better tomorrow, like not a better, sorry, to the other side. You're essentially leading them on to the other side and it feels good the whole way through the game. Yeah, I'm trying, sorry, I'm just trying to get the uh, trailer up on screen so people can maybe get a sense on what this game is. Um, yeah, it's really interesting because like, as you can see, like you basically play as, uh, I believe, that dog that's like herding humanity through mm-hmm. puzzles and whatnot. The sheep dog of humanity, essentially. Yeah, and I thought it was a really cool, interesting game. I just looked at the um, howlongtobeat.com and I think it takes like 10 to 14 hours to beat. And I was like, I thought this game would have been much shorter. Like, I don't know... A if, lot of puzzles. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if this game might even overstay its welcome. That's what it almost sounds like. But you know, that's where we'll I'm see. at right now. Like, I'm like, this is fun, but how long can I keep going? Right. So that'll just be the uh, the only only the issue that I might have with the the game. That's why actually I downloaded. I was like, nah, I'll come back to this later because I'm I need to get through a lot of other games first. But speaking of that, uh, next game here on my list was a uh, Dordong. I think Dordogni. It, I uh, probably butchering it because I believe it's a, a river that's over in Europe somewhere. And this one was really interesting because it tells like a story of like a, uh, a a girl with her grandmother and how she basically almost drowned. But when they sort of like saved her, she has amnesia. So she's trying to go back to her grandmother's house who recently passed away. And you're trying to figure out like what happened and like try to remember those memories that you had that led up to you drowning and stuff like that so like you're looking at pictures and videos and there's postcards there's like books but there's like a lot of puzzles and it's just a really chill game and i think i beat this in like four or five hours so it was a pretty quick one um it was pretty cool like art style because it's almost like a uh, watercolor-esque look to it um very very simple simple game um but overall i enjoyed the story i think i maybe gave this like a seven like it was just a good game didn't do nothing brand new wasn't over the top didn't wow me but i loved the 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 deep connection and the the emotions that it brought out within the story so again game pass so you guys can always check this out whenever you want scott um let's talk about warzone actually i i played a little bit of warzone it's actually not on my list i've played warzone for the first time in months but um how how was your experience with Warzone? Is it still fun or is it dying out again? Uh no, it's 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 still fun, but it's just it's just as much fun as you'd expect it to be. Uh new <laughs> season, new battle pass, new black cell if they want to blackmail you for more money. Yep. Um two new meta guns that are insanely one sided in really any firefight. Um <laughs> But the car ninety eight is back in a sense. Mm, yeah. With the car ninety eight K, uh, which 
brings back the the one shot downs. Yeah, thank goodness. Uh, like so, yeah, it, it, it's great. Um, it's been bringing a lot of people back. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's just it's business as usual over there in in the Warzone department. Um, hopping on with a few people every once in a while, catch a dub here and there. Yeah, that's really that's really it. Nothing nothing spectacular, nothing amazing. I think they're just kind of. I think they're kind of phoning it in until uh, Black Ops Six comes out. Yeah, well, they're definitely setting up like they're they're about to throw the lob right now because of the uh, perfect timing, right? So Verdansk is supposed to return, rumor, right? And with Black Ops Six, but they're kind of setting it up with the the crossover event with Fallout that's about to happen, Mm -hmm. and they're basically saying like they're about to drop the Fallout nuke on Urzikstan, the map, and then like that leads to like the Wasteland map that you're playing on, and then like obviously like the map's not going to be playable, blah blah blah, and like they already nuked the map before. This isn't brand new for them, but this is pretty cool way to tie it into like some of their crossovers now um especially with another ip that they own and but it just kind of leads into hey the return of Verdance guys we're back baby but yeah. um yeah so that, that's pretty awesome to see we're so fucking back <laughs> yeah. all right roger a- any other games on your list that you would like to cover before i cover my last one no we're good cool so let's just round out the games play section with the uh the highlight for me honestly this game was damn near perfect as well just released back on june 18th came to game pass day and date indie developed game um i think the developers like chinese room or china room something like that shout out to them because they made a really really awesome game anybody who's big into horror but this one was a manageable or horror kind of game but basically it takes place on an oil rig and you were you went out to the oil rig because you were getting chased by the cops, blah blah blah. You actually don't find that out until later. Why? So I'm not gonna spoil that part. But like when you got reported to the um your boss's office on the oil rig because the police were about to be on their way, the drill that they were drilling down with hit some kind of explosive. So you were trying to make sure you get the boss to the helicopter, and then you get flown off the edge, off off the edge into the ocean. They they rescue you. You wake up and like this alien, like mutated, like flood looking thing has like took and taken over the entire like oil rig. And like they're taking control of like the actual humans and like mutating them and manipulating them. And it's like really, and you can't like attack them. You can't really defend yourself. Like if they catch you, that's it. You're dead. So it's a lot of like hiding, sneaking around a lot of, Oh shit, what's behind me running from them. But yeah, really crazy game. Like you're trying to get through puzzles. You're trying to like work your way. Like, how am I going to survive this oil rig? You go to the, the lifeboats. They fucking don't work. They break off. They fall into the ocean. Okay, boom. Can't do that. You go up to the helicopter to see if you can get on the helicopter. Boss takes off in the helicopter, leaves you behind. They, their shit blows up in the air. You're like, well, glad I didn't hop on that. And then the, and right, before the, right before the explosion, you just hear, fuck you, Wagey. <laughs> and then yeah. just... Yeah, it's, it's it's crazy, and then like you you just keep on progressing. Then you're trying to keep the whole oil rig afloat because it like it 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 took an explosion hit, so like it's starting to like fall apart and crumble. So then like you're working with the crew members that are still alive, but like some of them like start to die off. And but like the ending it just made my jaw hit the floor, and I do not want to spoil it because I was just like, oh, okay, like this doesn't normally happen in video games. I I've experienced this kind of game before one other time, and it definitely pulled on a lot of heartstrings. So highly, highly recommend. Please check this game out. Whoever's listening, even you guys, definitely check this out. The horror is manageable. It, it's not over the top. Um, definitely not like Alan Wake where you got to play it during the day. You can play this at night. Definitely manageable. Well, a lot of people don't have to play Alan Wake during the day, but I get it. I understand. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, Marshmallow, yeah, it's another one that's like very movie-esque in, in ways, but like it's more of like a walking sim at times. Like you're, there's like very basic puzzles. It's a pretty linear game. There's not much exp- exploration involved. Like if you try to go the wrong way, he'll like talk to you like, I shouldn't be heading this way. I got to go the other way. And you're like, okay, cool. Turn around, blah, blah, blah. Like it's very immersive. Like it, it understands like what you're trying to do. So definitely recommend. Go check that out. Over, I think I gave it a, a nine out of 10. So check it out as soon as possible. Well, let's go ahead and move on, though, to the uh, the heart of the podcast, because we actually got some a lot of news and some showcases to cover, so stay tuned. All right, going to kick it off here with the, uh, hopefully, I think, the last update we're going to get from this, the whole Microsoft versus the FTC over the Activision um, Blizzard buyout, and they have officially withdrawn the complaint. Um, from this and xbox can now officially close on all ends and move forward with uh no holds basically uh 
Microsoft wasn't doing a lot of moves like adding games to Game Pass, like a, like a lot of them or moving the ability to play games over cloud or a lot of other decisions that they're kind of holding off on until they closed on this deal completely. Um, so that's great to see there. I'm just glad that we're finally putting this shit behind us. I mean, we were covering this for what, two years it felt like? It was a long ass time. It was like yeah, every week was, we're like back again with Microsoft Yeah, that was... <laughs> What are we going to do now that it's finally done? We've got yeah. nothing to talk We're gonna about. We're going to just sit here and twiddle our thumbs on, on yeah. the show. we got nothing else to talk about. But actually, to, like, see you guys like games? Is that... <laughs> Is that why we're here to talk about? Are you, you okay? Like um, well, Roger, let, let's talk about another issue in the uh, gaming industry here. Sure. Let's talk about EA. So we've been talking about for the past few weeks, just like week in, week out, you know, layoffs 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 so in the wake in the in the wake of layoffs ea has done the best thing anyone has ever done <laughs> they've decided that execs need more money so the execs have been given across all of the execs for ea 60 million dollars in uh in bonuses and the ceo alone is taking home 25.6 million dollars this year alone in the wake of all of the the downsizing ea has done Man, what a rough time for them you know it's, yeah you really uh, <clears> only 25.6 like those are rookie I numbers you, gotta, you, gotta, you really gotta, you really got a feel for these guys especially after they've laid off so many people and still to only take home 25.6 million dollars that's you know it's hard yeah. to lay off that many people that they don't have to actually even look in the face yeah, I love I love the sarcasm, but um, yeah, it, it's just it, it's it sucks to see this kind of thing because then we see companies that the 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 executives they like take a pay cut to then make sure that the workers and all the actual developers can mm -hmm. get like a pay increase, like all the Japanese studios that we kept covering Nintendo for a while. That. Nintendo, yeah, is, Nintendo is very very famous for doing that. Yeah, I just don't know why we can't follow that model, but this is corporate America, and this is prime example of what happens day in and day out rich keeps getting the, the richer and keep getting richer and the poor loses their jobs so you know, you're gonna get more poor <laughs> those goddamn white people man every time every time oh, shit. White. goddamn white people <laughs> those goddamn white people these <laughs> motherfuckers ah god i hate i hate that shit that's like when uh that's like when all the uh the airlines got bailed out mm -hmm. uh and they just massive layoffs but you know, they were signing themselves $2 million bonus checks for shits and gigs. Yeah. Yeah. This That's is America. Premium yeah. asshole. Premium <laughs> asshole. You got to subscribe for that, though. Yeah. It's pre <laughs> premium asshole. You might not like it, but this is what peak asshole performance looks like. <laughs> so the uh, bad news is not over yet, Scott, though. Yeah, it's really, really not. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of some assholes over here, apparently, so Valve is being sued in the U United Kingdom. Uh, for 656 million pounds in real dollars, that is 843 in million dollars <laughs> in actual dollars. Uh, but it's over a claim of Steam of Steam using its dominance in the PC market uh, to shut out competition and overcharge for games. Uh, so I actually did bring the article up because there's just a lot to go over, and I'm not gonna, really going to hit all of it. Uh, but I am going to go over uh, some of like the quotes and just some of the claims here. Is that the lawsuit? Uh, is actually claiming that uh, Valve overcharged about 14 million PC gamers and was abusing its dominant position in the UK. Uh, so do companies who hold a dominant position in their in their market, not well in any market really, uh, are not allowed to charge excessive or anti-competitive prices. Uh, they also can't impose other unfair trading conditions that prevent or hinder uh, others from competing with them. And they went on to state that we believe Valve Corporation has been unfairly shutting out competition for PC games and in-game content, which means that the UK customers have paid too much for these products. Uh, the suit also goes on to allege that the preeminence has enabled Valve to continue charging an excessive commission of up to 30%. To game publishers, so that's mm. a that's a that's a huge number. Uh, when you look at other uh, other platformers like uh, Epic and, and others, they and like Microsoft, like they mm -hmm. charge like twelve percent. Yeah, like something something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Eleven. Yeah, I remember I remember covering uh, Epic Games when they moved theirs uh, to fifteen or something like that. Yes. So um, basically, the 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 lawsuit turns on three points. Uh, Valve imposes price parity obligation clauses on developers, preventing them from offering lower prices on other pl other platforms. Uh, uh, that add, that all add 
that all add-on content for games purchased on Steam must also be purchased through Steam, uh, and a practice known as tying, and then that, that the cut it takes on all sales through Steam, uh, the excessive commission has resulted in excessive pricing on games. Basically, you know, you charge the developers more, you're charging more money, it's all going to come back to the consumer because they got to make it up somewhere, and mm-hmm. that's going to be that's going to be our uh, our friends over in the UK. Um, so they they went on to talk about other fines that they've eaten over the past couple of years, uh, but yeah, looks like it's not gonna be uh, not gonna be a very uh, Steam friendly place over there in the UK. All right, for, we'll, for we'll see how reason. how well this holds up because remember with last time with the the UK getting involved in the video game industry didn't end up too well. Well, <laughs> Activision I, Blizzard. I, I, I would say yes. This is this is in the video game industry. But it's the consumer market, and it's mm-hmm. the laws of of their consumer market. So they might have a little bit more of a take on this one. Yeah. Because it's although they, I mean, they could the same argument could be made if if like a if a if a movie or a streaming company was doing this, or, or you know, it, mm-hmm. it's just because it's Steam that this is happening. It's not it's not because they're going after video game uh, people. They're just they just happen <laughs> video game people happen to be the ones doing this. Right. The video game people were the first ones to kind of enter this market, really. Like, it, it, video, like video services aren't the first ones to do this. It's video games that are yeah. the kind of the first ones to enter this sort of online streaming or, like digital or direct market, yeah. to you. Yeah. yeah, the digital yeah. marketplace. And then phones soon to follow. Yeah, because yeah, PC has been doing it for a long time, very long time, well, honestly. The first the first uh the first uh version of um of uh oh my god half life you know that yeah. came uh, with yeah. steam yep. yeah yeah so we'll we'll definitely i'm um, sure follow this and see what comes of it for sure but that is all of the, the industry news we got for you this week that is to almost what three times more than what we had last week or the last episode that we had i think we only had one news when it came to that but we do got a decent amount to dive into in the gaming news so let's go ahead and check that out So, um, funny enough, guys, there's no Xbox news to cover right away. Obviously, we're going to talk about the Xbox showcase later on, but uh, PlayStation was in the news, as always. What's going on, Roger? Um, <laughs> so, PlayStation has decided that they just hate their customers in general, and like money is just not something they care to make. So they've decided that, like, they don't really care about their credit card rewards program, and they're going to be shutting down the rewards program tied to their, I believe it was a credit card that they had. So, like, why even have their their card now? Right. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's so funny this comes at this time because Microsoft recently just launched their credit card with, mm-hmm. like, a rewards-based system, and, like, you can use the points back into, like, buying the games and, and all this stuff. And I'm like... I'm just so lost with the decision making that PlayStation, that PlayStation just does. Flabbergasted, dude. <laughs> yeah, like when as soon as I dropped this article, I was like, another L. Like, why? Like, what? What? What are they losing? Or what are the? Okay, what, let me rephrase. What are they gaining by shutting it down? Should be the real question. Probably not a damn thing. But they're stopping loss. Most likely, they're stopping the, yeah, the money they have to pay. Emerging money. Yeah, to keep that program up. The, they're they're yeah. stopping that bleed. They're cutting all the corners, I guess. Because yeah. they got to make their money back, you know, since they've been struggling so hard. They gotta stop. They got to stop shitting it out. <laughs> is what they got to do. They got to stop shitting it out. And this is this is numero uno on the list to stop shitting out money for no reason. Yeah. Next topic here, um, this one's pretty interesting because I've always had a, a, an interest in the movies. So A Quiet Place, the, the movie franchise, is getting into games. And their first game is being developed by Storm, Storming game, Stormind Games. Um, and it's called A Quiet Place, The Road Ahead. And this actually looks pretty good. Um, it, this one like kind of reminds me of the whole like um, like Alien. If you guys remember like the Alien, when you're trying to avoid the Alien, you have that little pocket radar and you're like... You, Pick them up with yep. a little bleeps to heartbeat radar, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like more or less the same thing. But this one, like, and you can't make any sound. Like, had to be quiet. Yeah, because like even Alien, like if you had the microphone, I believe it could hear you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That one, that game was really immersive. Because yeah, I do remember if you had the headset on it with like a it's microphone, like, yeah, it would like total immersion. It, I remember when um like NBA Two K did that shit. Like when you were playing, you had a headset on, you like cursed. You're like, man, that was fucking bullshit. It would like give you the ref would give you a technical foul. <laughs> for for cursing like that game like they don't do it no more but i was like man like that was just peak immersion like when they like built used those that shit. 
somebody crashed it by getting too many tech fouls. Yeah. And like, yeah, I gotta <laughs> remove it now. Yeah. You just imagine just being like sweating and you're just like up there on your screen and you're just like breathing. And you're just like this fucking ref. <laughs> <laughs> And all of a sudden, like your dog barks, scares the shit out of you, like alerts the xenomorph, and you're just like, shit Fuck. your pants for a yeah. second. <laughs> Get eaten oh. alive. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But yeah, so I'm, I'm curious to see how this game comes about. As it looks pretty cool. The, the movie franchise is really good. Um, so awesome to see there. But Roger, we got some really, really unfortunate news this um, past week, and I know you were really looking forward to this game. Yeah, actually. So, like, Sims will just exist for another day as the most dominant game in the fucking marketplace it owns. Like, Steam, like, you're never going to see a Sims competitor because even Paradox decided, yeah, we're not going to we're not going to make our game anymore. So Life by You, a Paradox game that was supposed to rival the Sims, gone. It's it's no longer it's no longer in production. It was supposed to launch last week or the week before yeah, into early, early access. Yeah. They delayed it a week, and here we are uh, a little bit later. It's not going to be coming out. They've decided to cancel the whole project altogether at this point. Yeah, hey, like Siri, play taps. <laughs> it's like really mind blowing because like Roger, I was me and you went back and forth for a little bit after I posted this article. I was like. Like, how does a company, like, get that far into production to a game? I'm, I'm sure it mm-hmm. happens all the time, but, like, this one's, like, in the forefront in our face right now. They're literally, like, they're, they're demoing it with people, and they're like, yeah, this looks awesome. Like, there's and another game were... that, that, that should have did this but didn't, and it's called Skull and Bones. But, yeah. like, this game, they were like, you know, it, it's not worth it. Like, we, I know we put billions of dollars, not, maybe not billions, but millions of dollars into this game. We're just not going to do it. Skull yeah. and Bones are like, right. you know, we wasted a ton of money, but fuck it. <laughs> we we got to recoup this money somehow. Yeah. They've made tens of dollars. They made tens, tens of dollars. dollars. <laughs> Possibly even hundreds. Yeah, so definitely definitely sad to see on that game. Because, like, Roger, like you said, there is no competitor in the sim the sim marketplace the or whatever Sims genre. Makes millions a year. There's a lot of and... non-gamers who only play sims like i guess you call them gamers then but like i know a lot of people that are just that is the only thing they play they don't really play any other games period they're like i don't like video games but i play sims on my phone or whatever and i'm like okay like, that's like crazy. nobody nobody out pizzas the hut but with sims like this yeah, game it's... got to demo <laughs> and then just stop like i'm just so surprised that this they were like you know they're at the end we're looking at videos it's looking good like the game looks like it could be solid and they're just like yeah nah yeah uh phil it's yeah a, I, I agree canceled it the day never before. mind i guess yeah hey, uh, hey phil i definitely agree i would say he has the best merch but um it's not better than our merch that we got going on if anybody wants a shirt let us know this is uh philippers one that he got that i still gotta get to him so <laughs> quick plug on that one but uh scott what's going on with Fortnite, man is so, this your new uh, game it's, I, I don't know it's 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 funny because when i when i looked at this i was like yeah it makes sense that i get this one uh because Fortnite is getting basically resurgence mm-hmm. uh for those unfamiliar uh the few of you that don't play call of duty or warzone or anything like that uh resurgence is a game mode in 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 warzone uh and uh, Fortnite is going to do their own little take on it called Reloaded. Um, so it's going to be uh, your normal OG map with points of interest like Tilted Towers, Retail Row, um, everything like that. But um, on June 22nd, they'll be kicking out the Reloaded, which is uh, when you're downed, you have a countdown or a reload timer. So it's basically like infinite revives for mm-hmm. a certain amount of the game. Um, so what they're looking at is uh, they're going to be starting off with timers beginning at 30 seconds. They're going to go to 40 seconds later on in the, in the game. Uh, and then just like Resurgence, um, your teammates can help lower that uh, by either downing an opponent, eliminating a player, wiping a squad. Um, not much uh, as far as if there's any looting that'll help as well. Because uh, right now it's just like downing an opponent is going to be two seconds, eliminating a player will be four seconds, and then wiping a whole squad for 10 seconds. Yeah, that seems like a really that seems like a really high. But it seems like it's going to be pretty uh, chaotic because this is like a yes. this is like a, such a small map. Like they took your OG map but yeah. like shrunk it down, and, and like you're basically yeah, playing like a small map. Yeah, like it's going to be chaotic. Yeah. So I, I think yeah. it's going to play out really well. 
Well, and especially with that, you're going to have a bunch of the old, the unvaulted loot that's coming back. So you're going to mm-hmm. have the revolver, tack shotgun, lever action shotgun, the OG heavy shotgun, tack submachine gun, infantry rifle, heavy assault rifle, bolt action sniper, rocket launcher, and the grappler. Yeah, and on top uh, of that, if I'm not mistaken, it's the OG graphics and like the OG sounds as well. Like they went back to, yeah. back to it. So I was like, yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm glad that this is a free to play game and not like Call of Duty where they you pay seventy dollars to get old content again. That's new content now, but you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're still gonna be able to get your victory crowns. Um, you're, when you drop people, they'll drop shield potions, uh, ammo, uh, shells, so medium, light, and, and shotgun, um, and fifty of each building material. So that's gonna be that's gonna that's gonna be crazy. Yeah, is what they're what they're what they're dropping and just. Yeah. I, I might have to hop in this week and uh, I, I give might, it a go. I might, I might, might jump in just just to experience it, just see how, how how fun it is. I, just, I, I I like to hop in like Fortnite, like they, when they introduce something like quote unquote new, like when they brought in like the zero build, like that was cool to hop in and experience Fortnite yeah. without building because the reason why I got out of Fortnite was was because there was the master builders, like they were Lego masters. Um, but yeah, the dude you tagged them and they were like. <laughs> Yeah, fill, build a castle around you. Like, well, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. But like, so that's that's one thing that happened this weekend, and I do want to just kind of give a little bit uh, to the other thing that happened uh, when I was reading through this was the uh, the Metallica, it's the uh, Metallica fuel mm-hmm. fire and fury event. Yeah. Uh, so not only are they getting the reloaded, they're getting the Metallica event. Yeah. Uh, so just just a big weekend for Fortnite, honestly. Yeah, that Fortnite festival is no joke, and the fact that that um that controller from PDP is coming out um, relatively soon, or it might be out now. Like it's basically the OG Guitar Hero controller, but just remade for the modern day, and it works with Fortnite festival. And they just keep adding more and more music and more and more artists to the to the collection. I'm like, this is crazy to me. Like th- this is just taking Rock Band and, and Guitar Hero and then taking it to the next level. It's awesome to see. Maybe they'll add drums and the vocals like Rock Band did. Maybe. Do it. I'm 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 killer at air vocals. Whenever we want to <laughs> do that. Yeah, I, I miss the old, day, the old days of playing Rock Band over at uh over at Roger's house, man. I used to rock the the bass. Roger's the guitar. Uh, Lizzie would be the the singer. Sometimes we have uh um Sean or um Ben on the drums. Like, it was always we was rocking, man. But let's go ahead and and, and move on to pretty much why everyone might be here. And that's covering, like, recapping all of the showcases that happened over the last, like, two weeks, two, three weeks-ish. Um, and we're going to kick it off, Roger, with uh, the PlayStation 1 State of Play, because that was the first one that happened late May, I think it was. So, kick it yeah. off, man. So, all right. Let's just, instead of going through and covering everything in the uh, in the State of Play for PlayStation, let's just kind of give a quick sampling of the things that I think were probably the biggest things to come out of there. Um, let's start off first with Silent Hill 2 which honestly is one of the craziest things people were talking about. They're like, this game honestly just doesn't seem to hit right. Do you guys, what'd you guys think of it? You saw the the state of play. You saw mm-hmm. how it looked. Does the game look okay to you? Cause, cause to me, it just didn't look what I was looking for. Like it just didn't seem yeah. like it was every, sitting. every time that we kind of cover like news from silent Hill. And I, I keep trying to like tell you guys like, there's something about this game that just seems off. Like it seems like it's a generation behind, um, mm-hmm. and it just it, and it, it's unfortunately coming from Bloober Team, which like has a hit or miss track record, and it's just mm-hmm. like this isn't the remake that we wanted. Like we want that Dead Space remake quality, not like a remastered version of the game. So yeah. like like a lot of people are pointing out like what is going on with the hair in the game because sometimes like that looks glitchy and it just kind of like. You, you completely lose all immersion because you're like that just looks awful like it's glitching through stuff or like the the arms aren't right or the clothing looks weird so like i think this is going to be a huge miss unfortunately when it comes out in october yeah no i'm kind of with you there and talking about huge misses i'm just going to add this one real quick here just because it's such an important thing is god of war ragnarok is getting a pc uh, a pc version we all knew this was coming but the problem with the PC version is it's going to require a PSN account. So this game is literally unplayable in a large portion of the countries that exist on planet Earth. So somehow they're still releasing a game where a ton of people just can't even play it. I'm at a loss on why they keep doing this. Like, like they ha- they've had all this massive, like like pushback from like the the hell divers 2 incident and then like ghost of shishima 2 that incident like 
there's a lot of issues that people are like, what the fuck are you doing by making this happen? Because no, there's gonna, like you said, there's going to be millions of people that still can't play your game on the PC market because mm-hmm. you're requiring something that's that shouldn't be required. Like, Yep. I just flabbergasted, dude. Flabbergasted. You, yeah, you, you think you would have learned shape. Like, at this point, like some, somebody has a gun to their head. They have to. They're, they're like, make them sign up for PSN accounts because we want as many people as possible when we hack your shit. Get as many PSN accounts as you can. Yeah, that... Or else this game's unplayable. I, I, Just big L's, dude. Ridiculous. Big L's yeah. all around. Unfortunately. And it's it's one they could have it's one they could stop. It's one they could have mm-hmm. stopped. I just well they they clearly can. They did it for health divers. Right. hmm It just took for the uh community to basically like submit negative and reviews to attack the game yeah, and they're like, Oh, wait a game. minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Wait, 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 you're upset we did this? You voted Why? with your wallet and, and your And voice? they're just sitting here going, There's no way that'll happen twice. <laughs> Let's try it again. Right. Absolutely not. Uh flabbergasted, my friend. Flabbergasted. It's gonna be the title but, of the episode. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's instead of getting further down this rabbit hole uh i want to touch on a game that i thought you know as opposed to like being a big hitter just a game i thought looked really cool is state of antara or ballad of antara so ballad of antara was just it 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 looks to me like just a spiritual successor to the to the the style of gameplay that i that i so come to love from from playstation like we have bloodborne things like this we got a game now that's just another big like souls like game it looks really good genuinely looks very good what do you guys think of it um wasn't that big of a fan i'm getting the trailer up right now as we speak like, so the audience me, can take it, a look it reminded me of another <laughs> style of like the wukong game that we're getting like it just looked good i i was excited to see it I, don't know. I mean, it's kind of like one of those wait and see kind of games. Like, yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it it could be it could be great, honestly. Like the art yeah. style is really interesting. Like it, like you said, has like a lot of Wukong, like Elden Ring almost. Like it's yeah. it's definitely dark, Dark Souls esque. It looks like for sure. But I feel like we're we're starting yeah. to see like a flood of these games, which I know we're going to talk about. I don't actually I'm not covering any of them. The Xbox Xbox had a couple of them that looked really cool too that were similar yeah. to like this in the Souls like. So like look what happened with Liza P like sometimes you do get like a really great yeah. game like we're like oh cool this is another just another souls like but the actual storytelling and gameplay was good yeah yeah count me in bro no it's yeah it looks great uh cautiously optimistic is really how I've yeah. been dealing mm-hmm. with a lot of the souls like coming out over the past couple of years obviously Liza P ended up being amazing um I think we'll see how this how this plays out looks good uh looks honestly fantastic but cautiously optimistic is really the only way i can go yeah all right and then let's finish out here with the state of play let's talk about the big hit winner i think that came out of the state of play and that's astrobot so we had the demo that was shipped with the ps5 astros playroom or whatever yeah and honestly it was it was better than it had any right to be for a demo that shipped with the console. And it wasn't like a demo. It was a, it was a demo of the, the hardware tech. Yeah. It was like, like a showpiece. Like, we had sh- haptic, haptic feedback and stuff like that. You know, the, the, the actual controller where both of your triggers push back against you, you know, the, the touch panel, everything. Did you play it? Like the game. Did you play Astro? Did you, did you actually play Astro's Playroom? I haven't beaten it, but I played it, and I was like, "This is mm-hmm. actually like better than it has any right to be." Right. Yeah, a lot of like, a lot of people were saying like with Astrobot coming out, this could actually really compete with like say like Mario Odyssey, where like yeah. that that 3D platformer game, like each platform kind of needs one. Where this is PlayStation, obviously Nintendo has there, but like where's Xbox? Xbox needs one next, but we're not here to talk about Xbox Banjo. right now. <laughs> and yeah, Banjo, like Spyro, Cry- like they have a lot of IPs that they can do it with. And they have the perfect yeah. developers to do it as well. And I think this game, honestly, Astrobot is just building off of that. And it's not just like a a single platformer about a character that they just came up out of nowhere. Like this is about a character who actually like, you know, it's it's pulling different characters from all their different IPs. Yeah. And actually showcasing who they are. Like this is PlayStation. 
I, I thought honestly, this is the kind of thing we need out of Sony now to actually get some sort of staying power in the market this year because they're just they disappear. They they're like a they're just water in a flash of water in a pan. That's all they are. <laughs> yeah, that that's an understatement to say the least. But I'm trying to get the uh, the trailer up here on screen for Astro Bot because honestly, the it showed really well too. Like the the trailer's mm -hmm. like three minutes, and there's a lot of Easter eggs that that you're like, oh fuck, that's from that game, like Uncharted or or um, God of War or, or what Nate um, uh, Horizon. Like there's a lot of like they're like you said they're pulling from like all of their IPs, and just looks really good. And like it's it's a reason why to have a PlayStation. Honestly, like if they keep like this is a great great game and it adds to like the variety because we go I, I like to joke about it like playstation is copy and paste like all of their games are third person over the shoulder they use a crossbow it's just in a different time era like that's basically more or less what playstation makes this is not that <laughs> this is a 3d 3d platformer and it's something different so yeah man L -l definitely excited the uh, biggest question that a lot of people had um behind it was like whether it was going to be like a a full 70 dollar game or is this going to be more of like a $30, $40 game? Like, Roger, what, like, what do you think this is going to be? What do I think or what do I hope? <laughs> realistic. Let, let's keep a real, realistic expectation that, that what Sony might do with this. Or does it go day one into their um, PlayStation Plus? I think, honestly, we, we need to see this be a $40 game. Like, this is definitely not going to have the staying power if it's a $70 game. Like, it's just going to flop, it's going to flash, sizzle in the pan, and it's gone. I, I really hope we get uh, a $40 game here, because that's what we need to start seeing out of Sony, is these games that pull you into their into their environment again for cheap. Microsoft's doing it with Game Pass. Like, you, you can't leave the, the Microsoft environment because it's just so cheap and easy to play different things. Look oh, at my games game played this week, or since last time. Yeah. I have exactly. four games that I played on Game Pass that I probably would not have bought. Mm -hmm. Same here. Like, <laughs> it's just I that. wouldn't have played like Galactic Air, wouldn't have played Humanity. I wouldn't be playing Halo Infinite if it wasn't. I wouldn't be playing Diablo 4. Yeah. Like, my whole list, except for two games. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah, three right? Three games, yeah. It's, it's silly. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, shout out to, to PlayStation for uh, at least showing up for Summer Games Fest week or week two weeks mm -hmm. or whatever it was but um this is probably one of their worst showcases unfortunately but we'll rank them a little bit later on in the show but let's go ahead and move on to the next show that happened and this one we're going to all kind of give our highlights maybe we'll, we'll do one one at a time like round round uh, round robin so for the summer games fest 2024 they're like two hour showcase give or take um wasn't the best showcase but there was a couple couple highlights there i just we were like oh cool that's awesome to see here so kicking off here, one one big surprise. It, it kind of got leaked or rumored right before the show anyway, but Lego announced a new game and it's Horizon Adventures. And this is like a Lego game based on the PlayStation IP Horizon. I love that IP. The biggest surprise here is that it's coming to more than one platform. It's not only coming to the PS5. Not only is it coming to the PC, but it's coming to the Nintendo Switch, which is a big surprise here because neither of the Horizon games are available on the Switch. So the first time you get to experience the Horizon game is via this lego game but maybe that's an enticement like if you enjoy this lego game come play the real experience over here on the playstation or the pc i guess it's Cause... it's what playstation needs to start doing they're losing they're losing so fucking hard dude yeah so this game actually looked pretty cool looked a little bit different like i recently played through like the, the lego skywalker saga and that was a great experience like if they do that but build on this i think this could be a really great game but um, moving on, uh, Roger, what's one game that's uh, highlighted that showcased really well for you? So for me, I Space Marine. Just even the thirty second clip we got during the showcase, just dude, I'm hyped. that hit for me, dude. Yeah, September. <sighs> what what day do I got? I'm so hyped. September fifth, <laughs> or no ninth. Sorry. Um, really the fucking fast, dude. Yeah, I can't wait until it gets here. I've never played the first one, but this one has really like old school Gears vibes. Like that's what it reminds me of, like the original Gears well, of that's War. That's what the old one was. It was so fucking good, dude. And I'm like, I really hope that we can play this together, or like with, get a group. I don't know how many players you can play this up to. I forget what it says, either three or four. But um, yeah, I gotta play this with friends. I don't want to play this 
solo because it seems like that cooperative yeah. experience this is where it's is, at. Yeah, this is a game I would also play because, like, in a Space Marine adventure, you truly, really don't just get one person. That's the thing. Like, a Space Marine, their Space Marines are in squads. Like, mm-hmm. even with a sergeant, you still have the rest of your squad with you there. And I, I just that's i think it's gonna play really nice i'm i'm actually excited to play this and i would set up a a weekly play day for like you know four to five hours for like two or three days a week yeah Yeah, i would play the crap out of this yeah we gotta we gotta definitely look into setting excuse me setting something like that up that'd be pretty awesome what about you scott which one what, what game showcase uh really well for you so I'm actually I'm actually gonna change mine. I was really I was really on board with the uh, Quidditch champions there for a little bit because I know mm-hmm. yeah, I we thought missed it, good. it. I we missed it dearly um, in Hogwarts Legacy, and they said the whole reason it wasn't there was because of the Quidditch game coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, and here it is. It looks good. It looks fun. Um, but I completely forgot that they're bringing back skate. Yeah. So. I, I as far as between those two, I would have to go with Skate that I'm a little bit more excited for. Um, I could probably I could maybe play Quidditch Champions for a little bit and then just never play it again. Just hop in and be like, okay, yep, that's what Quidditch would have been like in Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts, and yeah. I'm done. And, and then I'm done. It's just interesting <laughs> that this but, is like labeled as like Harry Potter Quidditch Champions, so it's set like yeah. during the timeline of Harry Potter being at yeah, school. Yeah, I mean, he's in the he's in the trailer. yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, so. It's cool, but I, I wish they could have just put that in Hogwarts Legacy. So, um, of the like, when I'm trying to look at my like my big three, like skates got me more excited. Now there's plenty of other things in there that have me excited, uh, but seeing skate come back is gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. So, fun. were you more of a Tony Hawk um, or a I was skate definitely fan? A Tony, I was definitely a Tony Hawk guy, but I still played skate. Mm-hmm. So, I think yeah. I think the uh, the Tony Hawk re-release definitely helped uh kind of revitalize yeah i'm trying uh, to look here when was the last skate game that came out it was like uh, early early two early 2000s yeah two, 2013 uh early, no okay yeah there, no it was there was like 2008 or 2007 or something like that I, 2010 the third installment of skate was released in 2010 it? and then okay. skate 4 ak now just called skate is yeah. coming out next so yeah four, so about 14, 14 years, years. Yeah, yeah crazy so yeah but yeah, no, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun one. I'm definitely excited for that just to see the franchise come back, hop in. I mean, it was between I played Tony Hawk, I played Skate, and then the, what was the other ones? Uh, Thrasher, Skate, and Destroy. Oh yeah, jeez. I would play Memories well. unlocked right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then uh, and then of course BMX Triple X. But yeah, it's so um, crazy. Like yeah. I gave no fucks about skateboarding in real life, but I played the shit out of these skateboarding games. Well, I skated <laughs> in real life when I was a kid as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, skate skate looks fun. I'm I'm more excited for that one than I am than I am the Quidditch Champions game. Okay, um, right, Roger. What's your what's your excitement level behind the skate game? Not much. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Let's be honest here. I the the last skate game I played was the Disney Skating Adventure one. Oh jeez, <laughs> love that. Yeah, for sure. So let's go ahead and circle back here to me. Um, one one excitement here because I've been asking for this for such a long time, and it's the fact that Valorant has officially come to console now. At this point, um, they announced that it was coming, but it's it's here now. It's in beta form. Uh, you have to get a, a beta invite. I do have X four more codes I can give out if anybody would like to join. But um, Valorant is a really interesting experience on the console to say the least um right now it's really interesting because there's like no ranked play it's all unrated stuff and i'm hopping into like a lot of level one gamers and you're it's it's cross progression it's like my account carries over from the pc but like you there's no cross play right now at least and you can tell like there's a night and day difference like this is their first time ever playing valorant you're like this is this is crazy but then you hop into a lobby where people who've played valorant for a long time you're like i'm getting steamrolled just like normal but like it's it's interesting because everyone had that fear of like what about aim assist there's no aim assist in this game at all it just has this like interesting like uh kind of like a a focus mode but it's not it's not like you're aiming down sight but like you just your screen like comes together just a little bit more and helps you like with your aiming so it's not necessarily like an aim assist but it definitely helps but it like it helps you like say the pistol you know like when there's like a left click for shooting or right click is the the three bullets where like that helps you determine the difference kind of shots that you're doing with that pistol if you're focused then you're doing like the one shot at one time if you're not focused then you're going to shoot the three bullets 
So it's a way of balancing that. Um, definitely feels a little bit slower because it's it's hard to you can't flick to the next person. It's like you can only go as fast as your thumbsticks are set to. So like that has been a difference because I've I'm so used to like shooting one angle and you're flicking to the other side. It's like if you're aiming down sights like because I I was using Odin a few times and you're like <laughs> you're like slowly coming across the screen. You're like this is really slow than what I'm used to <laughs> on on the PC, but overall I've yes, been enjoying it. Yeah, I've been, I've been killing it. Like it's been, been fun times. Um, I post that one screenshot. I was like, yeah, I'm like 19 and four, whatever the hell it was. And we were winning eight, four. My team was like, you know, we're going to forfeit at halftime. I'm like, why? <laughs> like I'm so pissed right now that we forfeited. But I was like, yep. Yeah, yeah, so Overall, if anybody wants to check it out on the uh, console, Roger, I know you have PS5. If you want to give it a go, just let me know. I can drop you the uh, the beta code on that. But, Roger, let's talk about another game that uh, showcased really well for you, man. All right. So we had Black Myth Wukong came up again. Um, we got another, but it wasn't really a gameplay trailer. It was just a cinematic trailer. But still, man, I'm just, I'm a simp for fucking souls like games dude yeah this game has been great since we've been following it since its initial announcement um it just had an interesting showing because like at the end of the trailer it didn't show the xbox logo and i know we were talking about this a little bit in the pre-show but uh basically they come out saying like, hey we're still polishing the game but then xbox comments in that it's really more of like a timed exclusive without saying that because they said that we can't comment on what partners sign with other partners and that's basically saying it's a timed exclusive that's why and but they basically the idea is like whenever it does come to xbox they want they do want it to be the best place to play the game so xbox or pc whatever but um yeah we'll see i'm I'm definitely curious to give it a go it seems like it's going to be a really long game and it's really interesting because this has come from a really small development team what about you scott are you interested in the uh, black myth wukong souls like game oh yeah for sure yeah, are you are you going to give it a go or are you just bullshit? I'm going to I'm going to give it a go. I'm yeah. going to give it a go. If you can beat it, I mean. <laughs> oh. 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 I'm on Damn. fire. <laughs> Damn, that hit <would> hurt. <laughs> I mean, it can't be that bad, right? Right. Yeah, it can't be no, too I, bad. I definitely want to, I definitely I definitely want to and I've wanted to get back in and play Wukong, but um I just have yeah. it and I think once once this comes out, it's going to kind of yeah, that doesn't. That up to the front of my list again. I moved it off my one list. When does it come out now? Black Myth. We'll go release date August twentieth. So um, yeah, I'll be sick that day. <laughs> so <laughs> calling in sick, boys. Just kidding. For official reasons, those are jokes. <laughs> All right, Scott. What what about another game here on your list? So it's not. It, it, we already knew it was coming. Uh, but it the the gameplay that it it released it was just one once again it's just it's just keeping that hype train rolling and that was for Star Wars Outlaw that was Star Wars Outlaws the gameplay that they pushed for it uh, it's I'm I'm super hype I'm excited um, and I I just can't I can't wait for this fucking game man who are you I telling really like just watch like watching some of the gameplay watching what they're doing like just what just be like when when do I get to do that win in face thank you yeah it is right yeah. around the corner right, and right I'm... here it's it's so close you can almost taste it i am um, super pumped for this game like i was showing you scott when we were playing next to find i was telling you i was like i'm so excited for this damn game i pre-ordered this bitch from target just so i can get the steel book that also comes with my it man, my man pre-ordered from a big box store that's yeah. how fucking excited he is for and like game. the steel book looks dope and like they have a steel book for the assassin's creed uh, shadows that drops in november and that shit looks even more sexy i was like yeah i'm getting it from target don't care like i i need it <laughs> i need it i need it in my hands right now but yeah, yeah star wars outlaws from the showing at the summer games fest to its ubisoft um showcase because they had an extended gameplay you saw like yep. 20 minutes of gameplay on on the ubisoft yeah. store the stage it's just think of like gta but in the star wars world like this is yeah. going to be so crazy and like the reputation system that you have in there too with like the different syndicates like if you fuck up with the the huts too much so yeah they're gonna come get you but and then there's also like the the wanted level system like if you get like to five stars yeah the, the imperials are coming after you then with the dark troopers and i'm like those are not the people to be fucking with like i, I need it i need it <laughs> yeah. I, I need my i need my dodo plane yeah, it's going to be... I really hope this game does exceptionally well. I mean, it's coming from the guys who make The Division, so, like, 
we got really good hopes right now, especially Grand with Theft the concept. Auto, Coruscant City. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Can't wait. It's be great. Roger, what, Roger, what's your excitement level on the Star Wars Outlaws? I'm gonna temper temper my expectations because, like, I just that's it, fine. It seems like it could be a really good game, like a really good game. But I, like, I know it you also got, could just flop. Yeah, it could be like Jedi a, Survivor. It, and, it's and, a high and, risk, yeah. high reward. Yeah, like uh, it's as much as I would like like to be a fan of like a Star Wars game. Like I'm not typically a Star Wars guy, but I like it looks really good. It does, man. It looks it looks it, it's it's one of those things where it's like you have to you have to wake yourself up from the fever dream because you're like, oh, it looks too good. It looks yeah. too good to be true. Something's yeah, wrong. that's Something's what's been wrong. happening a lot with the games, too. And that's yeah. like what we're talking about with these showcases. Like everyone's like, oh, man, this looks so good. It comes, comes out, out in 2025, like... though, and you're like, Okay, well, uh, it may look good. Cool, it's a cinematic trailer. Anyone with, you know, like, let's let's stop for a moment and say, WoW has cinematic trailers. They look amazing. <laughs> then you get the gameplay WoW, and you're like, whoa, this is not... Wow, what is this toaster shrewd looking fucking ass <laughs> yeah. shit? Hey, don't want you talking about my WoW classic like that. <laughs> yeah, Riot, yeah, Riot cinematics are impressive. That, that's, that's for sure. But, um... Yeah, let's let's go ahead and move on to our last game here on the list, and I want to cover Delta Force Hawk Ops. I know a lot of people are probably like, "Eh, fuck that game," but I'm not really too excited for the multiplayer aspect of the game that they announced, and that was the like whole extraction shooter, like real sim kind of game. And I was like, "Nah, I'm good." I'm excited for the story campaign that's dropping, and it's all like basically the retelling of the Black Hawk Down like story um, that has happened, and they're like taking like scenes from the movie, obviously that that we've seen for many many years. And it's like, this game could be dope. Like, that would be an awesome story to experience on on these games. And the gameplay looks phenomenal. Like, the graphics look stunning. Like, hopefully, the gunplay feels great. Like, the 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 um, voice acting has to be great too. Like, this could be a this could be an under the radar game that comes up and, and does really well. Well, are For you, sure. you either you, either you guys share my excitement on the Delta Force it. Hawk Ops. Yeah, I, I would play it. I, I'd play. I'd play it for sure. And I could. I agree with you. I, I could see this being one that definitely like flies under the radar and then comes out and it's just this absolute banger. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, we'll see. I know. I think it comes out next year. Delta Force Ops. Let's see. Campaign. Sorry for the pause here. I'm just trying to look it up, see if there's any. I don't think there's an official release date yet. Um, nope. So yeah, I'm sure it's a TBD. So we'll we'll see when that when that happens. But Roger, what's your last one on here on your list that you wanted to highlight? I got two still. Uh, so I got it's really a struggle. You know, do we talk about Once oh, yeah. Human, the uh, the sequel to Rust, essentially the the spiritual successor to Rust, or do we talk about Metaphor? Once Human looks game? fucking weird and crazy. Yeah, it looks fun, but the problem is, uh, like Rust, you know, it's a fucking game where you have to deal with people who literally just get their fucking boners off of making people's games horrible. Like just ruining everyone else's experience. Yeah. Um, I I would say out of the two, the one that's probably gonna have the most excitement, at least for me, is Metaphor. Is, is the, re, re, oh, re Fantasio. So good. I've never played. Metaphor any, looks so good though. I've never played so any good. of the other Atlas games, but I was like, I don't have to play any of the other games, and I can just play this and pick it up. That's and every Atlas game, yeah. there is not a single one you need to like play a game before it. But it just bothers me to like it's labeled as like Persona Three or Persona Four, or Pers- and I'm like, but I gotta play two. Final and three Fantasy before. does it too. Like, I hate it's... that's why I never play Final Fantasy because there's too many of them. Like if they, if they drop the numbers, I'd probably be easier and just play. Like it yeah. just it genuinely did... bothers me. <laughs> we did discuss that, that was the same Dragon studio. Quest. Yeah. yeah. We did discuss that that was the same studio that did the the last couple of Persona games, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like Atlas Persona is only an Atlas we, studio. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So that's definitely going to be a good one. I'm I'm curious to see if that uh, comes to Game Pass. Day one hasn't officially been announced, but like all the Persona games have been coming to Game Pass. Finally, a lot of the marketing deals that with this game have been with Xbox as well. So maybe yeah, it, and if it comes to Game Pass, that makes it easy. Where like. Sony is flopping like they're losing they're losing hard and they need to figure out what to do 
I'm just reading chat here. Yeah, literally watch a new player gather, pop them in the head, and take their loot. Just <laughs> like that, Phil. Just like that. But, um, yeah, um, Scott, what, what's your last one here on the list that you would like to uh, talk about? So, uh, aside from everything else that's already in the list, yeah, um, I, yeah, I know it, it's uh, man. So I, I went, I, I went with the Kingdom Come Deliverance too. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm pretty hyped for that. Uh, I've played Kingdom Come. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, a lot of people hey, are definitely hyping this up. Like the first one yeah, was in a rough state, it eventually became hype. great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the work they did on that was that really, really helped save uh, a lot of a lot of perception about about that game, uh, and I think taking those lessons uh, and putting them in day one of uh, Deliverance Two, uh, I I think it's gonna be a huge winner. Mm-hmm. I think it's I think it's I think this one's just gonna get played for years and years and years and years, and it just looks good, and I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's it's slated for this year, but apparently it could slip into twenty twenty five. But it's just kind of wait and see if it see if it does come out. It's it's crazy that it's been six years since the first game originally originally released already. But Roger, any excitement behind this game? I know I know every once in a while you hop into the uh, whole like chivalry medieval kind of games. I love medieval games, and I love medieval Sims. And like, I played, uh, I play Bannerlord and stuff like that. And you mm-hmm. can fight on the ground and do stuff there, and that's pretty cool. And I, I, the only problem with this is this is the squad style game, right? So like, it's it's medieval fort storming and fighting, but like you know, in a Call of Duty style gameplay uh, loop. I don't know. I just anyway. I don't know if I need another shooter in my life where I have to just like sit and play like. Well, it's I, a, it's it, there's a big story behind it too. Yeah. So you could definitely just play through the story. Not as, if it has multiplayer, yeah. you don't have to really play that. Oh yeah, we'll we'll definitely see. But any other games you guys wanted to highlight from the Summer Games Fest 2024 at all before we move on to the Xbox? In not the last song. The what? In Natria, the last song. Yeah. Uh, it just, it just looks weird and fun. <laughs> and <laughs> that, like I said, there was a couple that I was like, oh man, which one do I really want to talk about? Like that was one of them. Um, Kingdom Come uh, was obviously the one that I, you know, I, I made, I made my final decision uh, for. But then there was uh, what the first Descendant. Yeah, that looks good. That comes out next uh, month. I've been contemplating if I wanted to pick up that new looter shooter that's coming coming out. Yeah, and oddly enough, like Wonder Stop, I feel I don't know if that's gonna be kind of like a kind of like a, what was the what was the game you played where it was more of just like story and it would the the coffee the coffee one coffee, coffee talk, talk mm-hmm. that one uh, it's, it's it makes me wanna it makes me it off makes your me brain feel, and relax yeah it makes yeah. me feel in- that that might be a game like that where it's just more of like the visual novel with some cues here and there from the player uh and then slitterhead yeah that, that, looks cr- that, that looks that looks crazy that looks insane yeah i, Actually, I, 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 I know there's I a the entire list at this point because like in in some way shape or form they all look fun but like that was that was my my big three but it was like man it was a tight yeah, it's a tight thing yeah for sure. Just, I'm way more hyped than others. Drop Tears this uh, IGN article with all the other stuff that was <laughs> announced real quick. If anybody else wants to check it out, so we can move on to the Xbox showcase. Um, everyone's saying that this was probably the best one of the of the summer when it comes to showcases. They had 30 games, and 14 of them are dropping this year. A lot, I would say, like majority of these games are also coming. I was supposed to put a picture up on screen with all this stuff. Whoops, sorry guys, but um, wow. Yeah, I just realized I was for, that we were going to do that, but oh well. But um, for Xbox, man, three games that I wanted to cover was basically the first game that kicked off the show other than Call of Duty. Call of Duty got it basically like, hey, Call of Duty's here, but check out the the deep dive after the showcase when it, with its own special one. We all know Black Ops 6 seems like it's going to be a killer, but they kicked off the show with Doom, the Dark Ages, and this looks fucking good. Obviously, it kind of got leaked a little bit ahead of the show, but what we visually got to saw, like, actual gameplay, 
looks really good. I've never played Doom 2016 or Eternal. It is on my list to get through hopefully this year um, before Doom The Dark Ages drops. Obviously, this is like a prequel, though, to both of those games technically. Um, but, man, does this shit look good. Especially when the guy, when the Doom guy was shooting like that gun that you load a skull and it's shooting bits of the skull out at the at the enemy um like the gore the 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 decapitation like just the bits and the pieces that would fall off the enemy like that shit looks good and i'm like roger i know you were a fan of the uh the doom games are you excited for doom the dark ages i mean it has to do better than the last doom game did yeah good luck right because they were both really fucking phenomenal good games luck. this one i hated Oh, Eternal? You didn't like Eternal? Yeah, dude. Eternal could eat dick, bro. Like, it was just... It was so bad, the fact that it was just... <clears throat> um, makes me mad, man. Doom yeah. Eternal, like, it flopped in my book because they were like, all right, everyone wanted a speed run Doom 2016. Let's make Doom Eternal a speed run game. <laughs> so, like, they just got rid of, like, the actual fun mechanics in favor of, like, making the game... A speed run game and I'm like i'm like i'm not here to play ag uh, like a uh, game's done quick like i'm i want to actually play a fun game and the last one like the first one felt really good doom yeah. eternal kind of flopped for me yeah that, that's rough to hear man because it's a nine out of ten for most outlets 96 percent on google like it's it's arguably yeah. one of the the best first person shooters at least consumer wise uh critically acclaimed but yeah man every game to each his own honestly and if it didn't hit for you didn't hit for you hopefully dark ages kind of reels that back and uh kind of makes the, the more like maybe story focus and, slows and it down remember, a little bit you're talking about critics here too and like what do they know half the time lately yeah fair but I mean, it, it, overwhelmingly, it's 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 oh, yeah, been yeah, it's yeah. interesting where like a lot of them are like you'll see them like oh this game's like a nine out of ten, but then you see like five out of ten, you're like this game is a very mixed bag right now. Where but if you see most people rating it like eight mm -hmm. nine whatever, you're like okay this was like overall yeah. overwhelmingly positive. So we'll see. I'm I'm definitely excited for it, and I believe it does come out. Um, I got a list here of all that shit. Um, it's it's slated for 2025. It's going to be, I think, one of Xbox's big games of 2025 because man, they had a lot, <laughs> for sure. But Scott, are you excited for the the Dark Ages for for Doom? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. It looks it looks phenomenal. Um, it it's gonna be fun. I, I love <laughs> I it, I loved like just the gross shit. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I know you're a big me medieval Renaissance kind of guy yeah. too. Like you love the the Renaissance fair. Like you, that is your your style. It's so satanic. I can't wait. Yeah. Um. Next game I wanted to cover because boy was this a fucking like whoa! Didn't expect to see this here, and that is Life is Strange Double Exposure. Um. I have personally never played any of the Life is Strange games. It is on my list. It's actually on my wish list right now to buy it. I'm waiting for it to go on sale. Um. I want to play through them. I primarily want to get through the first one, obviously the remastered version of the game, because this is like a sequel to the OG first game. Um, it's just a little bit into the future of the, of the, of the storyline um, where he plays, I think, like the main character, I think her name was Max, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this looks pretty cool, man. I'm, I'm really interested to see. This is not what I was expecting to see at an Xbox showcase, especially from a third party. And I think this comes out uh this this year if i'm not mistaken i'm just trying to clarify here on my list yeah october 29th day after my birthday shout out that um october 29th of 2024 so we do uh i got i got some time to get through the first game but don't want to wait too long roger i know you have played the life is strange games are you excited for this one no i honestly like the first life is strange was all right but like it just felt a little overhyped for me Okay. It just, I I didn't like the ending to Life is Strange. I felt as though it just didn't didn't close out well. Um, and then the follow up game was was all right. It was better, but not just didn't hit. Like I had visual novels that just felt better storytelling wise, and I felt more involved in in engrossed in what was going on than with Life is Strange. Okay. You must have problems with a lot of games that review really well. It's it's <laughs> just I'm I'm looking for something that does a game that does something new, innovative, and I just I I I liked some of it, and I liked the fact that you could it was 
it just feels like the West is late to pick up on a lot of these genres and just doesn't do them well sometimes, in my opinion. That's all. Like, the second one I thought did a lot better than the first, and it, it built upon it a lot. But then I also played the first one years after it came out. So, like, it didn't age well, in my opinion. That was all. And then they tried to re like they tried to do their their re-release of the game with the with the uh, the true colors the remastered I guess is what it was the remaster of the original yeah and it and it flopped because they didn't even try to update the graphics and things like that mm -hmm. well it was more like a remaster as opposed to a remake yeah. so it kind of looked yeah they did not that they didn't... better like it it wasn't yeah. that that better. But yeah, I, I definitely know what you mm -hmm. mean. But it seems like all the Life is Strange games, Life is Strange games review yeah. exceptionally well. Like they get eights and nines across the board. So hopefully mm -hmm. that continues the trend here with uh, Double Exposure, and it's a and it's a great game to to check out. Um, what about you, Scott? Have you played any of the Life is Strange games at all? I've not. No. Does this game make you want to check out the series at all? Possibly, but I would have to go back and I'd have to play the first one just to just yeah, to kind of get a feel for it. Um, yeah. So you're, so you're kind of with me on that. Yeah. Yeah. But last but not least, definitely not least, there was talks on what we could get, what we might get, but this is what we did get. And this is Gears of War E Day. I don't know about you, but me and plenty of other people may have cried during this trailer because we are getting Young Dom and Young Fe and Marcus Phoenix back in action. This is like basically when the locusts first come up and this is emergency day, guys. Like this is when humanity's like fuck we need to do something because we're about to die we're about to not exist and hopefully it, re it returns to the roots of like um like the fear like the horror of like man i'm about to go up against this enemy i might get my shit cooked versus like yeah. here's like two and three where like you felt like you were like the super soldier and and the fact that you also get to kind of see how marcus ends up in prison because like mm -hmm. that's how you start the game yeah. What what did he do in the last game? Because like the first gears is is kind of a cliffhanger. It starts on a huge cliffhanger, yeah. and you're like, "How do we get here, dude?" And they're right. just like, "You're in. Let's go." <laughs> and you're like, "What okay. the fuck happened to humanity?" And they're like, "Don't even worry about it." And you're like, "I'm kind of worrying about it." And right. Like, so hopefully, no hof yeah, no hopefully, hopefully it definitely connects that story. And a lot of a lot, a lot of people were saying like. Maybe we actually get to see some connection between uh, Dom and his wife because obviously we know what happens later yeah. on in that in that game. Um, so it's like spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler yeah. alert. Like forever ago, like what seventeen years ago, however long it's been. But yeah, like that'd be pretty cool because that like builds on to that. Like if you go end up play, replaying through the game, or if it's your first time playing Gears of War, you play through that, you see that connection of Dom and his wife, and then boom, you you play that game, you're like. Damn, we just, whoa like fuck like yeah like that shit could hit next level hard next level but yeah i, I thought xbox's showcase was phenomenal there's a lot of other games that i really wish i could talk about um but yeah we'll, we'll definitely see how 2024 and 2025 turns out for xbox and a lot of basically like most of these games are coming to game pass day one not all of them but yeah, it just wins for us but yeah. moving on to the um Another heavy hitter for a showcase. What happened at the Nintendo Direct, the, Scott? The real winner of the summer. Let's <laughs> be honest. Let's be honest here, because everything that they've put out uh, is guaranteed banger for the most part, uh, or something that uh, we've either been waiting for, uh, we've needed. We've finally been uncucked. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. We're getting, we're getting uncucked. We're getting some. We're getting some classics coming back. We're getting. We're just getting some some new shit. And it's, it's honestly, N Nintendo just stays just stays winning with this. Uh, the Nintendo Direct was an absolute banger. Uh, but for me, the three, and I'm not sure if you guys saw me going back and forth here a little bit yes. on my new <laughs> games, you know. So well, so my my initial my initial number two was gonna be Darkest Dungeon two. But then like as you go back, you're like, man. We have Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. We have the new Mario Party Jamboree, which is going to oh, be huge. We have great. Donkey Kong Returns, which is I I played the shit out of that when I like when I was younger, like just awesome things. But I think I mean we'll we'll get to my my real one here. Uh, but for number number one for me, uh, Tales of the Shire. <laughs> it that it's a it's going to be like just another mindless game. Like literally the whole point is you hang out in the Shire and you have fucking dinner parties, man. Like, 
<laughs> what more could you want? You're just chilling in the Shire. Like, your upgrades are to your house and to your, like, dining set. <laughs> so you can serve more people and have better food. What's not to love about that? And it's like, you know, it's the, it's, it's the one thing that, you know, would be the most enjoyable about being a hobbit is just sitting around and eating all fucking day. Uh, and then smoking and drinking and gardening and all that good stuff. But like, you get to garden in this, you get to do all that. I'm just really excited for that game. That's going to be one to just sit down and just like, if you need to just like decompress. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like this is going to be the game. And until, unless, unless feeding people gets too stressful, in which case <laughs> I'll probably drop that shit. It, it uh, gotta be like coffee talk then you're just like giving them coffee all day and you're just like listening to the shit that's like, what it okay. is yeah you're just sitting down listening listening to adventures uh, some old dude marks your door up uh, you know but then it goes it's the awesome though to see this game it's uh, coming to the PS5 Series X and S Nintendo Switch uh, Netflix games and Steam yeah. thank god Netflix games I can't wait that's gonna be such a such an absolute banger yeah exactly exactly phil if gandalf walks in what about an old friend and then you pull out that like aged cheddar <laughs> you get like quadruple xp you party up and you're all serving like fucking biscuits and shit it's gonna be fun that's good that that's like that's like the like, just a fun mindless game like, it was, i can't it, wait for this game to come out and hear how this game actually plays for you and hear how dog shit it is it's gonna be great <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like the last time I was hyped on Lord of the Rings. IP coattail. <laughs> yeah, it's like the last time I was hyped on a Lord of the Rings mobile game. I played it for like two hours. And I was like, this is dog shit. I'm never <laughs> yeah. playing this shit again. Uh, it's, I feel like it's going to be a mix between like Animal Crossing. Um, and uh, it's coming out like, later this year. Like, 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 like Stardew Valley. Yeah. What did I, what did I say? I said uh, that something like Star, Star, Star Valley Crossings shit earlier. Like <laughs> it's just a mix of that. Cause like you go, you garden, you get your whole thing. Um, but so what I did put in for another, for, for my second of three most hyped games is going to be uh, the Metroid, Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Um, but we had spoken earlier, it's going to be coming out next year and not even early next year, we think. Um, yeah. So I put a little caveat on here that we'd spoken about earlier before the show is like, you know, is this going to be one of the flagship games that drops with the new Switch release? Yeah. Has to. Would this, would it has, it, at this point, like putting it, putting it off and then putting it out even further. It's yeah. the only thing at, that really at, makes yeah, sense. At, at this point, you might as well, because you already pushed it out for how long, Roger. How, I mean, me and you've been covering this since like we started it's the been, podcast. Yeah. Well, and, Metroid Prime was announced with the Switch. <laughs> it is why people bought the original Switch. Like, literally, it was announced, and they were like, it's coming to the Switch. And they're like, everyone's like, let's go! And then they were like, yeah, let's just stop talking about it. And everyone's like, where is it? And they're like, don't worry about it. Yeah. And then they, they then just comes in, says, says it's coming with the Switch, and then they're going to come out, come back like... We meant decade, Switch 2. Almost a decade later, they're going to hit you to like, we didn't tell you which Switch. It was gonna it, it was announced September fifteenth of twenty seventeen, seven yep. years ago. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because it, it it was announced the same day as Metroid Samus Returns was released. Yep. Yeah. And then moving into my number three, they finally answered the age old question, what if Zelda was a girl? And they put it in a video game. The Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom. Uh this is gonna be a fun one. Honestly, I think it's gonna be uh, a fun take as far as the lore and the timeline where it's gonna take place. Uh I'm still trying to see what all is gonna tie into that, but it's an exciting game. It's it's uh I think Definitely was not I, expecting it. I wasn't expecting it either, and I think that uh I, I think that like another like Tears of the Kingdom or Breath of the Wild would have just been a little too cookie cutter at that point. Mm -hmm. too soon uh, too and, yeah, too haven't soon. Had enough development yeah, time too soon cookie cutter and I, at that point it would have just felt like they were shitting out tears of the kingdoms um <laughs> like really at that point but uh yeah no this is this is gonna be a fun take on it uh it looks like the 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 graphics go back like the the, the art style goes back um almost i want to say kind of like wind waker ish a little bit maybe a little bit smoother but um it's I, I think it's gonna be a re a really a really fun story. I think it's gonna be a fun storyline and great gameplay. Um, and then of course with that, they're also bringing like Link to the Past is like back in the classics. Um, they're bringing that uh, over to the Wii as well, along with a bunch of other classic games. Mm -hmm. 
because Nintendo just can't do any wrong Not at, at this point. Uh, even Hello Kitty Island Adventure is going to be outstanding. <laughs> yeah, as soon as uh, I saw that trailer, be, uh, I dropped uh, it into the chat and was like, I found Roger's first stream game back. Yeah. In it's, Hello it's Kitty Island game, Adventure, though, That's maybe. the problem. It's not like yeah. a real game. It's yeah. a mobile-style game with mobile <laughs> gameplay elements. And I'm yeah. like, oh, no. Yeah. No. Because even like one of, our, one of our community members, like one of my friends that I hang out with, She's like, yeah, I was excited until I saw. <laughs> I was like, R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. to a not real. It was one. killed before R. it came out. <laughs> R.I.P. to a real adjacent one. But yeah, like, yeah. I, like, like once again, Nintendo just stays winning their classics. They're bringing, they're bringing Link to the Past, Four Swords, uh, Metroid Zero Mission, Perfect Dark, Turok. Like, they're all coming to Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah, yeah, that's that's and, definitely dope. Like, that's actually already out. But you know, that was like perfect time on them out. with them. Like, um, announcing perfect dark coming because they they showcased the new perfect dart at the xbox showcase for the first time and it just like oh, timing could not be perfect just winning yeah yeah and that's and that's why i put down here N nintendo ace numero uno right but man like, like i know you didn't cover it i know this is your part of the game like i'm not even a huge nintendo fan i rarely play my switch but like mario and luigi brothership to me looks it, really yes, awesome yes yes it, like, it all look it all looks good like, it's just a throwback to the Paper be... Mario OG yeah. style yeah. gameplay. Like, and it's crazy. Know, I, what have I been playing on my Switch? Probably the last game I've been playing on my Switch, Paper Mario. Oh, mm -hmm. Paper Mario. <laughs> and and like the thing is, like Origami King, in my opinion, was a flop because they just left the the gameplay elements of like the OG Paper Mario we all love and hold dear, which is like Origami King, Thousand Year Door, or like Origami King couldn't keep up with Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, like. That gameplay is where it's at, but like Origami King was just like, oh, it's uh, it's a puzzle game. You like you use puzzles to fight your enemies, and I was like, why? Yeah, this this was definitely one of their better showcases, their better Nintendo Directs, because honestly, yeah. we've been covering their, their getting, Directs for a while, and, stray. and they've been kind stray. of quiet. Yeah, stray, yeah. Hey, stray, Roger, stray Roger, we've been covering their directs, directs for a long time too, and Scott as well. And we're like, man, that was just such a, a terrible. Like, where are Boring. their first party games? Like, where are their new stuff? And they were just like, we were saving it for one Direct in 2024. Yeah, oh, yeah. here's all of them. Mm -hmm. here's, they just here, here, their here's the end of the life cycle of Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah. We're getting ready to announce the Switch 2 is what ha what it felt like. And and like the other thing I want to say is just like it felt like the best showcase to me because most almost everything in the showcase is this year. It's coming out soon. Yeah. Like we're going to see it, whereas like a bunch of the other ones are like, well, half of more than half the games are next year if they come out next year. And it's like because yeah. we've been there where it's just like, oh, yeah, 2025, uh, 2026, uh. 2027 you know what uh we canceled the project <laughs> well and that's why i wanted that's why i originally had metroid down as kind of like an honorable yeah. mention because the ones that i originally had they were all like this year this year but like but coming out of that i i still think like the hype is is the hype really hasn't died it might have gone dormant mm -hmm. uh, for a little bit when it came to the met when it came to the it just metroid never coming out and then finally yeah. saying it's coming out and, and like oh it's coming and everyone's like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah and then uh and then, over like, it yeah and i feel like i feel like putting my putting metroid in there like without mentioning the others would have just been kind of like a disservice yeah. to the ones that are coming out are mm -hmm. coming out this year um and are just a lot of just straight first like just first party like fucking bangers yeah um i'll tell so, you what i'm yeah. excited to play super mario's um party jamboree with 20 that's players gonna, with 20 players lit. that's gonna be yeah. nuts the coop the coupathon. Like, yeah, dude, it's gonna be it's gonna be fucking lit. It's gonna be People absolutely are, lit. are gonna hate each other. Like oh, it's gonna, who gets the bonus and everyone the else just stares at them until they uh, die. It's yeah. gonna be the worst. There's gonna be like there's gonna be like drive by fist fights Army of because of this game, a hundred percent. But uh yeah, I I would say with with a with a couple outliers from like uh Xbox Summer Summer uh, Summer Showcase, like like Gears of War uh fable which wasn't mentioned mm -hmm. um i think nintendo is the i think nintendo might be the big winner i just as long as microsoft releases some good games this year like they all come out well and none of them feel kind of rushed or or poorly planned i think they win as well but nintendo i think this year gave us the most to be excited for 
that we weren't like new things. We saw things that are new and they're coming out this year. Yeah, it's it was pure content coming out mm-hmm. of Nintendo Direct. It was pure content, no filler. No, yeah. Yeah. like yeah, that's how I felt about Xbox for once. Because a, a lot of time with Xbox, like they just yeah. have a bunch of filler bullshit. But yeah. every game that appeared on the Xbox mm-hmm. showcase to me was just like, yo, like they are great. Like I'm just like, like Black Ops Six looked great. Um, even we got to see State of Decay Three, like gameplay for that. Yeah. That looked great. Um, obviously World of Warcraft made an appearance. That I mean, even that looked good. We got to see Metal Gear Solid Snake Heater. Like I was surprised to see them on the Xbox showcase and mm-hmm. not the PlayStation one again. But like we got to see that, and then like um, PlayStation would have a lot up. to be hyped for. South it's of Midnight, we got gameplay for South of Midnight, which was just announced last year. We didn't expect to see gameplay right now, but that's coming out next year, and we're like, fuck, that looks good. Um, yeah, like you said, Fable looked good. We got to see the new DLC, Roger. We didn't even talk about it. Diablo Four. Vessel of Hatred, like that, that drops out in October, and you're like, fuck, that looks mm-hmm. good. Um, Indiana Jones, yeah, Vowed. Um, we had to see Assassin's Creed Shadows, Stalker 2. Man, both showcases I, yeah, did this, not this miss. This whole year, I mean, well, I mean, we can't say this this year for most of them, but this year and next year, if as long as they stay on track, gonna be two back to back great years for games. Yeah, we like, we hope back they to back can to be. back because we, we just experienced <laughs> one of the greatest years it's gonna be, uh, it's of gonna gaming be last year. Coming out of twenty twenty three, yeah, that's yeah. that's fair. That's one hundred percent fair. And honestly, like it's starting to be, make sense. It's like we're getting out of those like COVID years, like all them years where we didn't get anything, and now all those games got pushed back. And like Roger, you were talking about it. Games kept getting pushed back. Twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four, mm-hmm. and here we are. Games are starting to come out now. We're hopefully going to get into a nice cadence where these games are sticking to their release windows. Yeah, and hopefully they're not you know like skulls and bones where we're just getting games that are being released. Like yeah, they already spent like Triple A has been dead for a while lately. It's just like we get a Triple A game or a double a game and it's like wow that could be used no, another year this yeah. is useless yeah, <laughs> this game sucks <laughs> yeah so we'll definitely see how the next uh next year, year or so go when we uh, return next year's for the summer games fest and all those other events that do happen at that time well we do want to thank the audience who came through and checked us out live today here on twitch and anyone who does check us out later on youtube spotify apple Podcasts, or wherever you may listen to us at but uh roger where can the uh, community find you at Hey, I'm just on Discord lately. If you want to play a game, talk, that's where we're at. And what about you, Scott? You can find me on Discord if you want to play a game or talk. And if you uh, just want to get a hold of me, uh, hit me up in the DMs or kind of see what I'm up to. You can always follow me on Instagram as well. And, of course, you can check me out at Twitter at MrNeverChillin underscore um, threads as well. And then Xbox is X Never Space Chillin. Along with Facebook is Vic Brubacher for any questions, concerns. If you want to come on the show, hit me up there. And I do stream over on my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash MrNeverChillin. Um, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to be playing next. And I'm really excited to dive into July's uh, Game Club games for a shoot to win. But I do recommend uh, checking us out on um, the Press Start podcast Um social medias as well i drop a lot of more a lot of uh intriguing interactive content as well uh we got our throwdown thursday where right now we're fighting with assassin's creed characters on which one's going to win emoji challenges who's that character like there's a lot of a lot of good stuff so make sure you come through and check us out there but we do want to thank everyone again and until next time peace best start podcast